When were horses domesticated? History written in DNA. All currently living domestic horses originate from the western steppes of today's Russia, scientists have found. According to them, humans learned to control the reproduction of horses about 4,200 years ago. This transformed ancient societies, facilitating transportation, trade, and interactions between different cultures. A study published in Nature indicates that there was a change in the way horses were bred around 4,200 years ago. According to scientists, new breeding practices began to be introduced in the western parts of the Pontic Caspian steppes, and all domestic horses currently living on the planet originated from these areas. This date marks the beginning of a new era in human history, as horses significantly accelerated transportation, which led to the development of trade networks throughout Eurasia and interactions between different cultures. Horses changed the history of mankind. Their endurance to travel long distances and their ability to carry heavy loads allowed humans to spread rapidly around the world. Previous studies of the pit grave culture suggested that this revolution occurred between 3300 and 3000 BC, when these semi-nomadic people moved through Europe and Western Asia. However, in new research, a group of scientists has disproved the idea that large herds of horses accompanied human migration across Europe thousands of years ago. Scientists have identified distinct changes in horse genetics that indicate domestication occurred a thousand years later, around 2200 BC. The research was led by Pablo Libertad from the Instituto de Biologia Evolutiva in Barcelona. 133 researchers from 113 institutions around the world took part in the work. This team also included Polish scientists, Perzimisław Makarowicz, Daniel Makowicki, Jan Romanishin, and Marcin Seliga. An international research team has sequenced the genomes of 475 ancient horses. They were obtained from the remains of ancient horses from all over Eurasia. Along with sequencing ancient DNA, scientists also dated the bones to determine how long they lived. These genomes were compared to those of 71 modern domestic horses. By examining the horse's DNA, the team tried to identify evidence of breeding or human-directed herd management, including sharp declines in genetic diversity and shorter generation intervals. I started working with horses about a decade ago. At that time, we only had a handful of ancient genomes. Now we have several hundred of them, said Libertou, the first author of the study. It was particularly important to obtain answers about Central Europe, the Carpathian Basin and Transylvania, as this area is central to ongoing debates about horse riding as a means of mass migration from the steppes around 5,000 years ago, and perhaps earlier, he added. The research team analyzed their data for three horse breeding metrics. Researchers have traced when the ancestors of modern domestic horses began to spread beyond their homeland. They reconstructed horse demography throughout the 3rd millennium BC to accurately date the earliest signs of breeding. Finally, they found evidence of significant changes in horse lifespans, indicating deliberate manipulation of animal reproduction by early breeders. These three lines of evidence indicated that domestic horses were bred on a large scale as early as approximately 4,200 years ago. This date marks the beginning of horse-based transportation, which persisted as the fastest means of locomotion on land until the advent of internal combustion engines. One question that has puzzled me over the years has been the scale of production, how could such a large number of horses be bred so suddenly from a relatively small area of domestication to meet the increasing global demand at the turn of the second millennium BC? Now we have the answer, said Ludovic Orlando from University Paul Sabatier, research coordinator. Breeders controlled the animal's reproduction so well that they almost have the time between two generations. Put simply, they were able to speed up the breeding process, effectively doubling the rate of production, he added. Studies have shown the emergence of a lineage corresponding to modern domestic horses around 4,200 years ago. But scientists have found evidence of exceptionally short intergenerational intervals within a distinct lineage originating in Central Asia and associated with the Batai culture. Researchers believe that these people domesticated horses to ensure constant access to resources, such as meat and milk, that were necessary for their survival. However, this community did not engage in extensive long-distance migrations with their horses. 
The researchers determined that the genetic makeup of their horses remained local and did not spread across Eurasia. Our research confirms that horses have been domesticated twice. The first, taking place about 5,500 years ago, was intended to solve the problem of declining horse populations and provide food for human communities living on the steppes of Central Asia. The domestic horse as we know it appeared about 4,200 years ago through the second domestication. It was domestication that truly changed human history by providing rapid transportation for the first time, Orlando concludes. Waves on Titan's lakes and seas. Titan, Saturn's largest moon, is the only body in the solar system other than Earth that has rivers and lakes. However, unlike our planet, the liquid on Titan is not water, it is composed of hydrocarbons, including methane and ethane. In a new study, scientists found that the coastline of methane seas and lakes is showing signs of erosion caused by powerful waves. Titan is the largest moon of Saturn and the second largest moon in the solar system, second only to Ganymede. It is also one of the most intriguing and Earth-like objects in the solar system. It is larger than Mercury and almost as large as Mars. It is the only moon in the solar system with a thick atmosphere, which is four times denser than Earth's and consists mainly of nitrogen and organic carbon-based molecules, including methane and ethane. Titan is also the only planetary body beyond Earth that we know has rivers, lakes, and seas on its surface. However, unlike Earth, the liquid on Titan is not water. It consists of hydrocarbons, including methane and ethane, which are primarily gases on our planet, but behave as a liquid in Titan's frigid climate. This moon is ten times further from the Sun than the Earth. On its surface, temperatures fluctuate around minus 180 degrees Celsius. The existence of large seas and smaller lakes on Titan was confirmed in 2007 using images taken by the Cassini spacecraft. Since then, scientists have been carefully analyzing the photographs for clues about the Moon's mysterious environment. In new analyses, scientists from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology MIT, examined Titan's coastlines and determined through simulations that they showed signs of erosion caused by powerful waves. The description and results of the research were published in the journal Science Advances. Titan's surface remained hidden from our view by its thick atmosphere until the Cassini mission. Only photographs taken by the probe and data from the Huygens probe made it possible to describe the surface of this moon, including its seas and lakes. Since then, scientists have wondered what does Titan's landscape look like? Do storms rage on its seas? Or are they still, calm, smooth as a mirror? NASA is preparing for the Dragonfly mission, which will study Titan in detail. The launch, originally planned for 2026, was recently moved to 2028. Scientists planning the mission want to know what to expect on Titan's surface and possibly adjust mission plans accordingly. Professor Taylor Perron of MIT sought to answer the question of whether waves form in Titan's lakes and seas, which would have many important implications for the mission. Previous research has yielded conflicting answers. In their work, Perron and his team first looked at how waves erode the shorelines of large lakes on Earth. They compared this to images of the outlines of Titan's largest lakes sent by Cassini to determine what form of erosion might have created the shorelines seen in the images. Researchers analyzed three scenarios. One in which there is no coastal erosion, a second in which erosion is driven by waves, and a third in which erosion is a steady process in which coastal material gradually dissolves or sinks under its own weight. Scientists simulated how different coastline shapes would evolve in each of three scenarios. Modeling has shown that the most likely explanation for what can be seen in Cassini photos are waves. We can say, based on our results, that if the coastlines of Titan seas have eroded, waves are the most likely culprit, Perón says. If we could stand on the edge of one of Titan seas, we could see waves of liquid methane and ethane crashing onto the shore and crashing onto the coast during storms. And they would be able to erode the material from which the coast is made, he adds. Knowing whether there are waves in Titan seas and lakes can give scientists information about the climate on the moon, such as the strength of the winds that cause the waves. Wave information can also help scientists predict how the shape of Titan seas and lakes may have evolved over time. In their simulations, the three scenarios produced very different coastlines. 
The ones that most closely resembled the real Titan were the ones where the waves crashed or crashed against the shores. And those with uniform erosion resembled lakes on Earth that were eroded in the same way, for example by dissolving limestone. Scientists are working to determine how strong Titan's winds must be to create waves that could erode coastlines. They also hope to use the shape of Titan's coastlines to decipher which directions the wind mainly blows from. Scientists emphasize that their results are not final and direct observations will be necessary to confirm whether waves exist on Titan.